We are looking at shapes still and geometry, so let's have a little look at this and have a look at the odd one out. We've got two odd one out to look at. The first one is the top one, which is blue here. Um, we're going to look at that one first, and then we're going to have a look at the odd one out at the bottom. Now, I want you to pause the video in a minute and think about which one you think is the odd one out with the sentence. I think the odd one out is mm, because, and see if you can think of a reason. Okay, in theory, there is no wrong answer if you can come up with a reason why you think something might be the odd one out. So pause the video and have a little go now. Okay, hopefully you've had a think about which one is the odd one out. So three, two, one, off you go. I think the odd one out is because... Lovely. Now you might have said in the blue section, I think the odd one out is the cube here because the cube is the only 3D shape and the triangle and the square here are 2D shapes. Fantastic. Uh, you might have also said, I think the odd one out is the green triangle because I can see squares here and squares here. You might have thought about something else as well. You might have another reason why it's an odd one out as well. As long as you can give a reason, it doesn't really matter. Let's have a look now at the lower level, which is the red one, and thinking about the odd one out here. So you might have said, I think the odd one out is this blue shape here, the semicircle, because it's the only one with a curved edge. Fantastic. You might have said that the square is the odd one out because it's the only one where which has equal lengths as a... A regular polygon with equal lengths on each side and equal angles. Whatever reason, remember it doesn't matter as long as you have a good reason to find the odd one out. So well done. Now on to today's learning. Today we are going to begin to calculate the area of a shape. Oh, that's very exciting to do, to calculate the area. Now I'd quite like you to have um, a book or something, a flat surface near you to help you with this next task. So to begin with, you need to know what the area is, that it is the size of a surface. You need to understand that the best, sh if you can tell me the best shape to use to find an area and also calculate the area by counting um, some squares. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is get something, maybe I've got a book in front of me to help me here, something in front of you that can help you calculate the area. So um, if you think about it, you've got, I've got a clock here. I've also got a book in my hands, which I can use as well. If I'm looking at this clock and I was to measure the perimeter, I would get my piece of string and I'd be going around the outside edge to find the perimeter. Okay, but today we're not talking about perimeter, we're thinking about the area. And the area is the flat surface that kind of fits inside the perimeter. So let's have a look at what that is. Okay, the surface is the entire area inside the perimeter. In this case, the surface shape of this clock is a circle. So you can get your object at home and put your palm, your flat palm, over your object and feel the surface. Remember when we looked at the perimeter and we ran our finger around the outside? So the perimeter uses a finger to go around the outside, whereas a, the area uses the flat of your hand to think about the area we're looking at and um, calculating today. Let's look at another object here. So now we've got some windows. So if I had a window, I might run my finger around the outside to find the perimeter, but I'm not doing the perimeter, I'm doing the area. So the area would be the section of the window pane fill, which fills the, win the window, inside the window, um, which is the flat area of the window. And then we here have a table. You might be sitting at a table right now. And the area of the tabletop, which we have here, would be an area we could measure. Fantastic. Now, if we're going to measure the area of something, what kind of shape would be useful to measure the area? We're going to try out. Hopefully, you can spot my different shapes, my triangle, circle, square, etc. along the bottom. So let's see. If I put my triangles into my shape... Now, I know I've got eight triangles, but there's a lot of gaps here. You can see these gaps here, which aren't really being included when I'm trying to do that. So I'm not sure that triangles are the best shape. What about circles? Let's try something else. Well, circles are slightly better, 
I have less white space that's not filled, but I still have some white space. I'm not counting the entire area. Let's try something else. Oh, I'm quite happy with those squares. The squares have fitted neatly next to each other. They've all lined up. I can't see any white area I've missed inside my shape. So that looks good so far, but it's always worth checking to see if we've got it completely right. A rectangle now. Now it looks pretty good. They've lined up together, but there's a small area of white along the side. And my last shape. Again, looks quite good, but there's small areas of white either side. So I think that square was the best shape. When we compare them all together, we can see very clearly that this one is definitely the right kind of shape to use to calculate the area of uh, another shape, which is fantastic. So I can see very clearly that's really useful using those squares to calculate. And I have no little white gaps of areas I've missed when I'm calculating the area. So if we're calculating the area of a shape, this is my rectangle here, we can calculate the area by counting the squares to tell us the answer of how many squares fill that area. So the area of this table counted in squares would be what we'd count here. So let's look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This table has an area of eight square units. Now we're using the word units because we're not sure what we're measuring at the moment, we're just measuring in squares. So this has an area of eight square units. Now I wonder if we can measure the area of this shape, slightly harder to measure if we don't have something useful. So we're going to put this shape onto a grid to make it easier to count. Lovely, that makes it much easier to count. Doesn't matter which way you count, you can count with me when we're doing this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14. So this shape has an area of 14 square units. We've counted each of those squares to find the area of the shape. Now this shape is slightly different. This time some these bits of our shape have not filled an entire square. But if you watch carefully, we can make that a bit easier to work out. By moving part of the shape and ensuring that we have full squares, we can then calculate the area of the shape. Let's pause the video now to have a count and see if you've got the same as me. This shape has an area of m square units. This shape has an area of 11 square units. Well done. What about this shape? Again, a little bit tricky because we've got it filling not quite everything. It's going through half of these squares. We can make that a little bit easier. So let's have a go. Pause the video. Count the squares. This shape has an area of mm square units. This shape has an area of 16 square units. Well done. OK, we're going to compare two objects now and see what they, how they are different. Did that a bit too soon. Which one do you think has the greatest area? Which of these shapes has the greatest area? Now, I think the blue shape has the greatest area because it is bigger than the red shape. And if we counted the squares, let's have a little look we counted the squares we'd need to be a little bit careful of if we had this so we had 16 square units for this one and then we would have 15 so the difference here would be only one square unit so let's have a look again 
we have to be really careful when we're looking at them that we're using the same square units when we're comparing shapes of different sizes as well. Here you can see if we make sure the background grid squares are the same, it's no longer 15 square units but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, kind of 7, 8 and a bit maybe. So it's about half the size. But it's really important that when you're measuring and comparing you're using the same unit of measure as we've talked about before. Let's have a look at this shape now. You might want to think how to make that easier. We could just count all of these squares or we could move them to make it easier to calculate. We'll be looking at an easier method, a quicker method tomorrow for calculating area. But for now, you might find a quick way of counting those squares without having to count one, two, three, four. You might recognise this is looking a little bit like an array, but we'll do more of that tomorrow. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. If I know there's five squares along the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven squares down the side of my shape, could that help me work out how many squares there are all together? I wonder, without having to count every individual square to work out the area of that shape. Something to think about ready for tomorrow. What about this shape as well? If I counted along the side, is there a quicker way to calculate the area? Something to think about. And here, where we've got an irregular shape, by putting them together, does it make calculating the area a little bit easier or a little bit harder? When you finish this, going through all of these things, you've got some two tasks to do. For this task here, you are counting the squares on the shape. And for this one, you're looking at the colours and counting the area as it's divided up by those different colours. So I hope you can enjoy that.